Today's lesson is lesson number 87. We're going to be talking about histograms. <laughs> These are another way to present data. So we've seen bar graphs that present categorical data, right? Where, um, d data that has to do with words. So like favorite type of blank or colors or things like that. Um, then we saw box plots or box and whisker plots. And then yesterday we talked about dot plots. Those both have to do with numerical data. Histograms are another way to show numerical data. They look a lot like bar graphs. Okay, They have bars, but instead of words as the labels down below, it's an interval of numbers that's the label. Okay, And then uh, that's really it. So it's intervals, so it's numerical data. And since we're dealing with an interval, the bars are going to touch. So a bar graph, the bars don't touch, they, they're separate so that you know the different categories, but intervals, they go right up next to each other, okay? Okay, before we look at how to create histograms, we're going to make sure we know how to read them. So this is an example of a histogram. Okay, so this shows the scores on a math test in a particular class. Um, just kind of look at it, see if you can understand what this is showing you. And can you guys tell me which <laughs> axis shows the frequency? Y. The y. y, right, or the vertical axis. Um, we don't exactly have, like, x and y coordinates because it's not um, exactly a graph, but it is, like, the y or the vertical axis showing the frequency here, right? <laughs> and what does the horizontal axis show here? Scores. The test scores, right? That's the number. It's showing intervals of test scores. How is it organized, the horizontal axis? Every nine. Every nine, yeah. So like every grade, right? 60 to 69 would be like a D, 70 to 79 would be a C, and so on, right? So it's intervals of 10, but it goes like 60 to 69. So if we include 60 and we count, right, 60, 61, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there's really 10 numbers in there. That makes sense. That's kind of the only little weird thing, because um, we're we're including both sixty and sixty nine in that interval, okay, and then and so on for the rest. Okay, so how many test scores are in each interval? So if I were to ask you, how many students scored a D on the test? Do you think you can answer that from this? Yes. What would you say? Three. About three, right? Sorry, when I was making this, it wouldn't listen to what I wanted it to do. It wouldn't split it up more, but anyways, you can approximate, right? That's probably three. And how many students um, scored like a C on the test? Nine. 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 What about a B? Twelve. And an A? Seven. Uh, like seven. Yeah, seven. <clears throat> okay. So is there some way that you could tell me how many students took the test? You, plus 12. Exactly, adding them up. So you're so close. Uh, you went up to the D's, C's, and B's is 24, plus 7 would be 31. Okay, so 31 students took the test. Good, exactly. So because it tells us the frequency, we can just add up the frequencies and find the total frequency, which would be how many students' scores we were looking at. Okay, so do these look that bad? No. Yes, no, maybe so. Okay, let's give a, these a shot. So to create them, um, it's basically just counting up frequencies for intervals of data, okay? So first thing we're going to want to do is determine the max and the min of the data. So we want to know our range, what's the biggest value, what's the smallest value, kind of to get a, an idea of what the numbers are that we're working with. Once we do that, we're going to want to split it up into equal width intervals. So if we have scores that go from 60 to 100, we want to split it up into four intervals. So we'll go from 60 to 69, 70 to 79, 80 to 89, 90 to 99, like they did there. Okay? Um, typically, for a histogram, you want somewhere between four and six. Just It's kind of just a general rule of thumb. But sometimes it'll make sense to have more than that. Maybe you want all the percentages from 0 to 100. So you would 
it might make sense to break that up into just 10, so you would have 10 intervals there. Um, they should meet but not overlap, so you're going from one all the way up until the next number, or until the next interval starts, and then you start the next one right there and move on. Okay, so just like in this picture here, they meet right there, but they don't overlap. So I, I don't double count 70 in both of those. Okay? Then you're going to want to organize the data by intervals in a frequency table. So we talked about frequency tables. That was like the first thing that we did. Right? Um, so we had like, oh, there's um, the different like cans, and then we did the number there were. So it was like peas, corn. Right? And we counted up. We're like, oh, there's three, there's seven. Okay, so it's going to be like that, but instead of words here, it would be like scores, and we'd say from 70 to 79, there were three people. From 80 to 89, there were seven people. Okay, so the frequency table is going to look kind of like that. It'll have intervals, and then how many data points fall into that interval. Okay. Then after that, after you have your table, you're going to create a graph with intervals on the x-axis and, or the horizontal axis, and frequencies on the vertical axis. So at this point, it becomes a lot like a bar graph, okay? Bar graphs, we looked at the frequency table, and then we make the graph, right, with the categories on the bottom and the frequencies as the uh, vertical axis. It's the same thing, but instead of having a category, we'll have an interval, Right? It'll be numbers that we're looking at, not like who preferred lions. Okay? So uh, go ahead, finish writing those down. All right, so here's the first example. This one says um, the directions would be to create a frequency table, then use the frequency table to create a histogram. So the following are ages of the 100 U.S. Senators at the start of the 112th Congress on January 3rd, 2011. So we've had a couple since then. But um, these would be the ages. I kind of, I dropped out the ones in their 50s and 60s. I didn't want to type it all out. But these are the frequencies that were there. So there was 30 in their 50s and then 37 that were in their 60s. Okay, so I just kind of shortened the data for us. But just so we can get a feel for how we do this, let's count how many are in their 30s. Two, good, just these two that are 39. How many are in their 40s? Let's, let's count together, ready? Like we're in kindergarten, ready? Count. One, two, three, four. You guys aren't counting with me. Five, Five six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so there's 10. 50s and 60s I already counted and put them here for you. Okay, and then in the, their 70s, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 16. 32. 32. 16. There's 18. And then in their 80s, how many? 3. Okay, so sometimes there's going to be a lot of data that we would be working with, okay, but it's just counting. So when it's right in front of you, it's easier to cross it out, but I kind of just went quickly because this we're not gonna it's just long we got it we good okay so these would be the frequencies we can check make sure we added uh, we counted them correctly by adding these up right we want to make sure that our total is 100 because there's 100 u.s senators so we have 2 plus 10 is 12 here plus 30 would be 42 uh let's see 42 plus 18 would give me 60 and then these two are 40, so that's 100. Okay, so good, they all add up to 100, so I counted correctly. Okay, now I wanna make my histogram, so I'm gonna make a horizontal and vertical axis. The horizontal axis is gonna be my intervals, so I'm gonna write these down here. So this one would go from 30 to 39, this one goes from 40 to 49, and so on. Okay, and then for my frequencies, I want to make sure I include all the way up to 37. It's my highest number, so I think I'm just going to do these by tens, just um, up to 40. Okay. 
Why? Yeah, the age is on the bottom. The intervals go on the bottom. The vertical is how many. Think like back to dot plots. Do you see how this kind of looks like a dot plot? We would be like, oh, there's one here, there's two here, three here. Okay, so it's kind of like that, but instead of making the X's, we're just saying, oh, there's 10, and we make a bar up to the 10, or up to whatever number, kind of, okay? So it's kind of related to those as well. Okay, so between 30 and 39, there were two, so I made a little bar for two. My next one is going to start immediately after that, okay? So from 40 to 49 will be my next interval, and there's 10 that fall in there. Okay, then the next interval from 50 to 59, there's 30. From 60 to 69, there's 37. And in their 70s, there's 18. And in their 80s, there's 3. Okay. Um, you may want to kind of split up the data here. So I, like, shaded every other somehow just to break up the bars so they don't all kind of blend together. Um, but I don't really need a key for that. I'm just doing different colors. The histogram on the first slide, it was just, like, different shades of blue just to split it up. But it's all talking about the same thing. It's all just U.S. Senators. <coughs> okay? Maybe I would want to label this. I could say, like, U.S. Senator age. As my title. And then maybe I would label the horizontal axis as age and the vertical axis as frequency or number of senators, right, in that age range. Okay, questions on this? Good. Okay, go ahead and copy this one down. Yeah. All right, number two. It says, listed are the scores of a golf tournament. I'm sure the uh, 68 on there is Marky's score. No, I get like yeah. 30. <laughs> and 18 holes? Yeah, that's Nice. Easy. All right, <laughs> it's easy. Okay, so if these are the scores, we want to create a histogram with them. And we're not given the intervals already done for us in this case. So it wants us to make them. It's like half done. But we need to make the end point. So if, I'm, if I want to use an interval width of 3, then I have three numbers in there. So I have 68, 69, and 70. Okay, so this goes from 68 up to 70 and includes both the end points. Okay, so this goes 68 to 70. Okay, then the next one would go from 71 up to just before this, so 73, and then 74 to 76, 76 and 77 70. to 79, 77, 78, 79. It's not there, but it's just, that's the interval. That's the interval. Okay, so now we count how many fall into this interval. How many are either 68, 69, or 70? So let's count. I've got the first one is 68, so that's 1. I see 69, so it's 2. And then seven, 70 would be 3, okay? Between 71 and 73, I'll count those. The first one I see is 71, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. I think that's it, so 4 in there. Okay, then between 74 and 76, including those, so 74, 75, or 76, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. The last one also. Okay, so I have seven there. And then between 77 and 79, it's just what's left. So two. Yes. Okay. Okay, go ahead. I want you now to make sure that you have this in your notes. And then make the, I'll erase the uh, slashes in case you want to write down those numbers. This one, the data set is smaller here, so it might be helpful to write these down. Okay, you have the frequency table, so I'd like you to try to make the histogram on your um, iPads now. Thank you, yes, by yourself on your iPads. All right, so your histogram here, you would want to put the intervals along the horizontal axis. 
and then the frequencies along the vertical axis, I see the highest frequency is 7. So I want to go at least up to that. I'm going to go um, by 2s up to 8 for mine. And then the intervals are down here. So this would be 68 to 70, 71 to 73, and so on. Okay, for the 68 to 70 interval, I have 3, so I make my bar up to there. The next interval, remember, I'm starting right after 70, so I'm going to have them touching. Okay, remember for histogram, we want our the bars to be touching. Different from a, from a bar graph, right? So um, this interval has 4, the next interval has 7, and then the last one has 2. So my um, graph would look something like this. I can see clearly the most golfers scored in here. Um, I might also want to maybe label this golf scores. I could label the vertical axis like number of golfers and then the horizontal axis here um, scores. Okay, um, for this next example, we want to talk about what would we do if we are not given intervals. So we want to kind of come up with them. There's lots of ways to do this. Um, sometimes it might be natural to use um, tens, so like zero to t zero to nine, ten to nineteen, and so on. Or maybe it's natural to go by twenties, um, by twos. All sorts of different options for this, though. Um, a sort of general rule that you could use is just looking at the range and then dividing it into however many intervals you want. So. Here we want four intervals of equal width. Remember for histograms they're always equal width. Um, sorry, this last number should be 65 actually. Okay, and if I look at the range here, I see that this goes from 65 to 42. So my range would be 23. Okay, this 23 means that there's 23 numbers between 42 and 65. But when I say that, that's if I'm walking on a number line. If I start at 42 and then I go here, this is 43. So that's 1. This is like my first number that I'm counting. But I also want to include 42. So I need to add 1 to this 23 so that I have all of the numbers that I need in my data set. So I need my range or the range of numbers that I'm looking at, the number of numbers I should say, um, is 24. Okay, so I added 1 to this. Okay, then I'm going to divide that by 4 so that I can put an equal number of, um, equal span of numbers in each interval. So I want 6 numbers in each interval, I want, or I want my interval to span 6 values, I guess, 6 numbers. So my first interval would go from 42. And then, I would start at 42, my next interval then would be after 6, so I would be at 48. Okay, so that means this one goes up to 47. And then, the, it might be easier to think if you're adding 6 with each one that you go down. So, 48 plus 6 is 54, 54 plus 6 is 60. And then... At the end of the range, so from 42 to 47, from 48, this would go up to 53 then. So I go back one from 54. This would go up to 59, and then this would be 65. If we look at these numbers, this actually is a, a pretty decent way to split up the data, considering this is inches, and we're splitting it up by 6 inches. So... This one, this interval here, if we were to convert that to feet, it would be 3 feet 5 inches to 3 foot 11 inches, and then we would be starting the next interval at 4 foot. 4 feet, right? 4 foot 0 to 4 foot 5. Sorry, this isn't 5 up here. This should be um, 3 foot 6. Sorry, 3, I was thinking in that. <laughs> um which would be six inches, not five. So three and a half feet to three foot 11, four feet to four foot five, four and a half feet to five feet, or I guess technically to one below that. So this would be four, 11. And then once I have five feet, I'm in the next interval up to 
five foot five. Okay, so that would be these um, converted to feet. So it is a kind of a clear way to cut it up. Um, if we just look at like three feet range, four foot range, and four and five foot range, we can already tell there's obviously a lot more in this middle category. So it's nice to kind of split it up into um, the equal six inches since that's since our data doesn't start until three foot six and it ends at five foot five. Okay, so let's uh, get this all out of here now. And then we would count the frequencies for each of these. So in this interval, there's three. In the next interval, there's four, then six, and two in the last one. Okay, so then we would make a histogram using this data. Um, one of the things that we did in class after this was we looked at the percentages of battery left on the iPad. So that was done on the whiteboard, but basically we got a range of values and we decided to split it up by increments of 10%. So if I start here at 10 and then this is 20, this interval here would represent the number of iPads from 10 to 19. So this would be another way of labeling. Um, and then I said 30 here, maybe say there was more. Um, so this, our histogram was more detailed than this, but I just wanted to show you, this could be another way to label the x-axis. You could just do it like a number line or the horizontal axis. And then it would be clear that this shaded one here is the interval from 10 to 19. Okay, it goes all the way really up to 20, so it's really like 19.9, .9, but the data that we're working with doesn't have decimals, so we're just saying, oh, 10 to 19 and including 19. All right, so <clears throat> here are some discussion questions to think about. Um, how are histograms like dot plots? How are they different? So they both deal with numerical data and frequency. They're a little different because histograms use intervals and bars, right? They don't, whereas dot plots just use one number. Um, is the median of the data set always in the middle interval of a histogram? So if I were to have, um, if I were to have something like this as my histogram, it makes sense that the median would be in the middle, right? But we also saw graphs that looked maybe more like this. Again, they should be touching. I'm just doing this quickly on the iPads. But if I had most of my data on one side, the median is going to end up being over in one of these. It's not going to be in the uh, middle, say, especially if I had maybe an even smaller one. It wouldn't be in this middle one. That wouldn't make sense in this one here because the median is just the middle value. So if these ones have enough frequencies in them, my median will just end up being over here. Or it could be on the other side as well. The situation was reversed. Okay, and can you find the exact, the exact mean and median given a histogram? Um, the answer to this is unfortunately no. Because the histogram gives you intervals, you can only approximate both of those things. So I could um, sort of cross out values and narrow down and think, okay, the median is in this interval. So it's somewhere between, say, 74 and 76 for the golfing example. Um, but I couldn't give you, I couldn't say for sure what that is unless I had the data set in front of me. Um, same thing with mean. We can kind of add up, we can kind of average out each bar and um, add those averages together and divide by the number of bars that we have to kind of approximate the mean using a histogram, but it's not going to be as exact as if we were to take the actual numbers um, that were in the data set. So, um, that is it for today. Sorry for the lengthy lesson here. Um, but uh, go ahead and give the homework for this lesson a shot, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks.